Yo, welcome back, big guy, little world. Uh, for those of you who don't know, this is my 05 Kawasaki Prairie 700. Just a little walk around. All my plastic dips peeling off because paint does not like working with cold plastic in the winter. So, look great in the summer. Winter time, flakes off. Anyway, so big request. Not even a big request. A couple guys asked me what are my uh, dimensions on my snorkels. So, because, you know, they want to do something like I got, I guess. I don't know. I'm always willing to help. So, I, let's start by counting <clears throat> how many uh, 90s you're going to need. So what I used was just regular Home Depot. I just went to Home Depot. took like 50 bucks. And uh, the way I got mine is this is the belt intake. This is my dummy snorkel because I'm kind of OCD when it comes to like numbers and stuff, whatever. So this is my carbon intake and this is my belt outtake, outlet. Um, cool thing about this is when your belt starts crapping out, it'll start puking out little bits of rubber at you. And you're like, it's a telltale sign. You need to go ahead and change your belt. Um, this is my temp gauge, coolant temp sensor gauge. Uh, I went ahead and, you know, this is, I mean, this thing's pretty, pretty custom. Like I, I've kind of spent a lot of time on this four wheeler within the last three years. This is my gauges. I wanted to do this a lot better, like quality wise with the fitment, which I think I still could, but it was kind of hard the way this works is because this slides in some tabs here and it was just super hard to get a good look when this thing's got to slide down and slide in so i mean it works looks really good i appreciate it um so let's talk about these snorkels so up top i got four two inch uh all the way around and then i went and bought like a 10 foot stick of pvc two inch piping white obviously um bought some glue and some cleaner most of this stuff I didn't even use the whole cleaner deal on. That glue, I'm telling you, once that stuff sets, it ain't leaking. You just gotta go around it a couple times and then, I mean, you're good. So, uh, one, we're just start with the 90s. You're gonna need one, two, three, four, five, six, Seven, eight, nine. You're gonna need nine 90 degree inch, two inch uh, PVC elbows. All right, and now we can take, okay, yeah, we gotta do 45s too. Um, 45s, let's do 45s. Okay, I lied. You're gonna need 10, 11. 90s two inch 90s pvc and you're gonna need one two i got a 45 going into my carb down there three here's a 45 four five six and seven you're gonna need seven 45 degree angle two inch pvc pipes now this is only here this uh union is only here because i had to cut my pipe off because the last time i built it i had to get my front racks off and as you see my dumbass didn't cut no release in there for my piping so i just had to cut it so anyways uh back to everything else so let's start with some rough measurements and these are super rough all right so what do you say this goes into that pvc piping about um, let's say about a inch and a half let's go let's just give it an inch and inch and a half all right so on these uprights we'll call it we're gonna need two of these because i mean i tried to perfect them but the way your your intake and your whole air box system is it's not going to be perfect so we'll say this is seven and a half right 
we're going to say this is seven and a half. All right. Now on your belt intake and exhaust, we're going to say this is seven. All right. Up top, other side, belt inlet. We're going to say this one is seven. All right. Coming down here off this 90. I'm going to say this is 8 inches. Alright. Down to our carb to our 45. You can make your dummy right here. You can make that as long as you want it. If you even want a dummy. Um, and, uh, also, another thing is while you're working on this, always know that your radiator cap, if you got this Prairie 700. Let me focus. It's right there. So what you're going to have, if, if you, either you're going to get a radiator relocator kit or, uh, I mean, you're just going to catch hell filling up your cooling system. So what I do is I pop that little top hose off, get me a little funnel, and then until fill it up until the coolant starts coming out of this end hose. So that means you got everything full. And then I just hurry up and put that sucker back on there and... Anyways, yeah, because this thing pushes a little bit of coolant. I mean, it is high compression, and I run race gas, so I push a little bit of coolant. But it's only in the higher RPMs whenever I just hold it too long. Uh, It doesn't leak it out. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't push it out of the exhaust. It just comes out of the, the cap. So, I mean, maybe I need to get a higher PSI uh, cap. That's a Tusk 1.6 uh, bar. I can't remember how many pounds that is. I want to say it's like 13, 14 pounds maybe. Anyways, back to what I was saying. This going down to your carb. You know, this is <laughs> this is rough as you get right here. I'm going to call that about 9 inches. All right. Other side, we're going to call this 9 and a half inches. 9 and a half. All right. Going down from all right we're gonna say this is two and a half inches and then up top here we got three inches so five and a half inches for this side right here to come from your 90 down to your 45 and then from your 45 to your other 45 we're going to say it is five and a half inches. Well, five inches. And then it runs all the way down to another 90, which goes into my belt inlet. And that is going to be... Hold on. This isn't the easiest to do with a phone or GoPro. We're going to call that... 11 and a half inches and then what I did right here was I just took me a piece of PVC and I slid it in just far enough to where it's seated with the elbow and on this boot I'm telling you this thing is literally uh, about half an inch three quarters of an inch to half an inch of PVC sticking out here and that thing I'm telling you it'll jump in that hole and it'll fit so perfect like it was like it was meant to be there all right back to more measurements so on this boot here, this right here is two inch uh, boot, and then it's actually called a two inch CI plastic to a three inch CI plastic. So this fits perfectly on your uh, belt housing. Everyone says put a gasket maker here. I do not because I'm telling you, you just got to get this sucker right here tight enough and that thing will never leak. Up here, same thing. What I did was I roughed my PVC piping up with a little bit of sandpaper just so it wasn't 100% smooth. And then I just uh, clamped it down really good. I mean, you could turn these to the inside if you want because your, your legs are going to be kind of right here. I don't have that problem, but whatever you want to do. So this measurement coming into my 90 down here is roughly... Let me get my tape measure right. Uh, I want to say it's about 
14 inches, 14, 15 inches into that 90. Okay. Now, coming down over here from this 45. We'll just say this is the same, same as the other side. Let's just do five and a half coming off of this, going into this 45. And then rough measurement right here on this. Coming down on this, off these two 45s, going into the straight, going across the engine, we're gonna say that is six and a half. Okay. And then going all the way across. Let me get my tape measure set back up. Going all the way across. I'm gonna say that is 13 and a half inches. 13 and a half inches going all the way across. And that is all my measurements on my snorkels. Uh, another thing is I had a guy request he wanted to see how I set my uh, crossover mod up. Crossover mod is your two boots, okay? And you take those two boots on your carbs and you cut a one inch hole in them. You go to Home Depot or Lowe's and get some, like some of the toughest gasket maker. Like they make some black stuff. I can't remember what it's called, but it's really tough. Black gasket maker. And uh, I cut a one inch hole on the inside of my boots. Just, I mean, I'm telling you, I've cut it smaller than the tube. And then I shoved that boot, the tube in there while they were mounted, but I cut it just enough to where, you know, you could push them still together. And then I marked it with a marker and I took a Dremel and I ground it down, marked both sides inside and out. And I ground it down with a Dremel to where it was flush on the inside of the tubes uh, to where, you know what I'm saying? There was no obstruction of air or whatever. And then I took gasket maker and I slid the tubing, put gasket maker on the outside of the tubing and on the uh, inside of the hoses, the boots, slid it in. I let that dry. I also marked it again, just so I knew it wouldn't move. Took the boots off of the four wheeler. You can get these on and off with them like they are. They will be one piece after this. And then I just took a layer of gasket maker and I, I'm telling you, I just caked that stuff on there. Nobody's gonna see this. You're, you guys are seeing mine. I don't care how ugly it is, it fucking works. So, uh, and then you just slap it on there, you let it dry, and then you come back with another coat. I did three coats of this stuff because I just, I, you know, I do a lot of mudding and in the water. I didn't want that to ever, because that's going straight into your intake. I mean, it's, it's going to do some, some stuff. So, uh, anyways, I put three coats of that stuff on there. Don't matter how pretty it is, just matter how it works. And then on the inside of the piping... <laughs> I took some, I put it on my fingertip, and then I just kind of worked it around where the uh, the uh, piping come into the hose and made it kind of smooth right there. And then let it dry and get kind of tacky, and then I went in with a rag and just made it, you know, made sure there was no uh, no lumps or whatever on the inside. So, yeah, that's how you do, that's how you do your crossover mod. So, uh, a lot of people say this helps uh, bottom-end response. Um, you are going to have to rejet your four-wheeler after you do this because you're going to, you got to think, you're going to have one hole sucking gas from two carburetors. So you may have to lean it out from where you're at now. Um, with my current mods, I have the higher compression pistons. I got my spark plug out right now. I have uh, the, I think, 12 and a half to 1 Wiseco pistons. Uh, I have the uh, cams from... Uh, webcams the stage twos call it the mickey dunlap grind but yeah i'm pretty sure all i did was got a stage two some stage two cam and springs from uh webcams um anyways coming to my custom exhaust those are just ebay pit bike mufflers and i'm telling you guys they make the same you whatever your pipe like this is a hmf uh you know aftermarket pipe come with my hmf pipe then this is my factory this diameter you can literally order a pit bike pipe size the same diameter as this 
and this same thing and then I just took those clamps and got both of them with a washer nice spacer made it look all good um, yeah back to my crossover mod uh, my jetting right now with my cams my pistons and on race gas I think I run 170 in the front and 165 in the rear um, and I'm telling you that it's clean oh and I also polished my carb slides they're polished mirror finish um what else have I done I have not done the diaphragm mod I don't I'm not even gonna try that because I heard if you get that wrong then it's a pain in the butt my radiator relocator this is all custom I mean the welds aren't pretty but it's functional I work at cat here in Arkansas and we had an old beat up backhoe hood that we were fixing a trash so what I was, I was like, dude, that would fit perfectly on the front of my four-wheeler. So I just took my radiator, mounted it to it, marked out the way I wanted my, you know, tabs to kind of fall. This was a hood that covered up the radiator on a backhoe, one of our new style 420s. And so I just took it and folded it down, welded it, drew me a good little design here, cut it out. It's not perfect, but I like it. I flipped my uh, front racks upside down because I kind of like the way it looks here you know with that kind of like a bull ring in the front I don't have a front bumper I don't need it I ain't running into nobody as you can see my catch can is working I need to dump it but I have to, when you know when you get the cams and stuff you're gonna need a catch can and obviously you can see that's some some oil in there I need to clean it out but it's working um that's about it if you guys have any more questions if you want to make if you want me to make a video on how i made my my manual four wheel drive mod coming up super simple just pull that put it there and you're in four wheel drive and i'm telling you guys all you got to do is make sure this cable is clean put you some lube in it for every time you ride and it works simple 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 i'm not spending 350 dollars to uh you know buy an actual buy your actuator or buy your whole cable kit whenever you can make this i literally made this there's a go-kart kit online off ebay the kit costs 13 dollars. it comes with this tab comes with this you cut your cable to fit and then all this i kind of made out of my old actuator you just got to kind of be smart i made a lever system that came off of a mountain bike that spring I just went and picked up. And you just kind of clean it up. Make it look good. And it works perfectly. I mean, that's four-wheel drive right there. And that's unlocked. The only thing I will say that you have to make sure that you do properly whenever you make your own four-wheel drive actuator. Now, I had put this thing up on stands. And what I did was I let it roll until I felt it, that position where it popped into four-wheel drive. And that's, I'm telling you, you, that's not just four-wheel drive. That's just partial. This thing needs to go way past it in order to be locked in because you don't want it to slip and pop back in the gear. And it'll it'll bend your whole front uh, clutch pack and everything inside your front diff. So whenever you want it, you want it to be engaged and fully engaged and fully disengaged because if not, you're going to have some big problems. So anyways, uh, this is big guy little world. If you guys have any more questions on this four-wheeler and everything I've done to it just let me know I got videos up uh, of this thing running my next thing that I'm probably going to do to it is we're just going to go ahead and punch out the cylinders to a 730 I mean that's about all I can do about as far as mod wise um, super reliable four-wheelers you just got to take care of them make sure the oil's changed I mean I change the oil probably every two or three rides um, and I'm telling you I don't even ride it for long periods of time i just ride it hit a couple holes and come back to the house after events i don't i don't do any like hobby riding i mainly go to to rides out you know in events mud nats last year hill rosa this year carters all their events and uh anyways you got any questions comments subscribe for more videos thank you